In this trading video, I'm going to show you how to create this stylized, grungy, cinematic style frame that we can also put into motion. Let's get started. Everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and one of my members in the Motion Science membership recently created a style frame for a challenge. And I thought it'd be interesting to take that style frame and kind of push it to a new level. And so that's what we did in the membership. And I want to show you how you can create a very similar type of style frame. So let's jump into After Effects. All right, here we are in After Effects. And the first layer we have here is a Texture Labs lens effect. This is a 3D layer. If you've watched any of my content for any amount of time, you know that I like to work with 3D layers and 3D cameras as much as possible. It just makes my workflow a lot easier. Next, we have a FBI headquarters file that is just masked out. You can see if I turn this mask off really quickly, we're just removing some of the white edges around it. And that is set to a lighten mode and is in 3D space as well. Next, we have a document with an invert effect set to screen. So if I turn that invert effect off, you can see it's a typical scan document, white paper with black type. We wanted to reverse that to go with the style we're doing here. So if I double click this pre-comp, you can see we built this document here going layer by layer. We started with this document and then we thought, no, let's go, let's start with this one instead. We'll add some shape layers here, which are basically redacted text. And we actually animated these all this is, is, these are shape layers, and the shape layers have a rough and edges effect applied to them and a stroke. And the stroke is revealing that shape layer. So it looks like redacted text that's being hand drawn on. Next, we have an Oswald pre comp. Again, this is a 3D layer. And if I double click this, this is something we built just like this. So we started with this document. Next, we dropped this over the top added some extra text over the top in the middle. And you can see if, as I go layer by layer, we're just adding bits and pieces and things we wanna change and just, you know, building it up very slowly, just like we would in Photoshop, but we're doing an After Effects because in After Effects, we have the ability to animate this if we want to. So that's what we created, right? This is the document for Oswald. And then we have a 3D camera. And this is why I design everything in 3D space because I can easily add a camera and then rotate and move around and get just the right framing that I want to get. So if I hit R for rotation, you can see it's just got a little bit of a Z rotation happening here. Now this is a one node camera, which I typically don't use, but for this I wanted to because of the point of interest and I could move the camera around getting that perfect point of interest. If you're eager to create motion design that's gritty, atmospheric and cinematic, like the example I'm showing you, I invite you to explore the Motion Science membership at www.motionscience.tv slash mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. Now let's go back to the training. Okay, moving on. Next thing we're gonna add here is a few layers of texture. So sometimes texture is literally just like grunge or grit. This texture is actually from an image. And what we really liked about this was that it said secret and it's crossed out. So this is sitting in 3D space as well. And because it's in 3D space, it reacts to the camera. Next layer we're gonna add is some grunge, some dirt, some lens grime over the top. So if I turn that off, and on, you can see that it's sitting here. This is set to a screen mode. And then we have another grunge layer sitting over the top, which is here. Just adding some depth, right? Just adding some depth. Next, we've got a really nice base composition here. We can take it up a notch by adding a point light. So we'll turn that point light on. And this just gives it some added dimension. That's with and that's without. Then we added a black solid, which is called vignette. And to that solid, we applied a mask, which we can see here on the screen and a high feather value of 297 pixels. And if I turn that on, you're gonna see all it's doing is just darkening up this left side to help our draw our eyes into this part of the screen here. We don't have to be focused so much here without, it's more challenging to decide where I should be looking it's because the left side is now darker. My attention is now drawn more to the center and to the right. Next thing we did is we went in and we added some effects over the top, right? These are some finishing effects. We've got lumetry color over the top. This is without and this is with. This is just bringing those black levels up, making it not look so contrasty, not so 
dark in the shadows, not so punchy. Under creative, we're using a LUT look of monochrome Fuji. On top of that, we've got some noise and a film texture applied. Now, you could get by without using the film effect that I have here uh, and just using some noise. I like to put noise over the top of everything. It, it really blends things together. And then I've got this posterized time, which I will turn on. If you remember on this original composition, we have these redacted lines that go across the text. Well, by adding a posterized time over the top of that, it's going to make it a little bit more steppy. And if I go into the final composition here, you can see if I hit U to reveal my keyframes, I added keyframes for movement here to uh, push in to the redacted text. There's also keyframes for focus distance. So I want a very shallow depth of field. And because the posterized time is on now, if I play this back, you can see it's just, it looks a little bit more organic to me, a little more retro. If I turn the posterized time effect off, here's what it looks like without. I mean, it still looks good. It's just a little too smooth for what I want. Like if you think about a hand drawing across text, you know, it's not gonna be 100% smooth. It's gonna be a little bit steppy in my opinion. So maybe this is too steppy, but I think for the look, it works really well. And that's the piece. So if you followed any of my teachings for any amount of time, you know that I always preach, we should start with style frames. And once we have that frame, then we can animate it. That's what we did here. We had a really powerful style frame that we can then easily animate and make something super cinematic. I hope you enjoyed this training lesson. I'll see you in the next one.